It was July 2020 when we took possession of our dream 90-acre property. There was a century farmhouse, horse paddocks, there was an antique barn, a drive shed, basically a good starting point for us to make this our forever homestead. But it needed a lot of fixing up. It needed a lot of TLC. And we got started with the interior of the Century Farmhouse, fixing it, designing it, and making it feel at home. Actually, fruit trees take forever to yield fruit. So one of the first things we did as soon as we took possession of the property is we planted our mini orchard. It's filled with several apples, several cherries, pears, peaches, and plums. It's a permaculture style, so we also have some nitrogen-fixing honey locust trees. The very first animals we got to the farm were ducklings. Hello, and then, shortly after the ducklings, we got some chicks. Just me, and we guys. got some light Sussex chicks, Rhode Island chicks, and black away. leghorn chicks. So now we had ducklings and chicks living in the barn. Then came the pride and joy of the farm. Molly May, the old English sheepdog. And she came to us at eight weeks old. She's pretty amazing, very smart. She sure did like to dig. She was a little bit mischievous, but we let her free on the farm with a little guidance and a little training. She's turned into an amazing dog, and I couldn't ask for any better breed than the old English sheepdog. Holly. Her training went very Sit. smooth. She learned Sit. all the basic commands at a very young age. Good girl. And she's you just overall incredible. She followed me around the farm wherever we went, and she's my best gal. We didn't go anywhere without our Molly. Sweet Molly decided she was going to help us build a fire pit area. And the rocks were a little heavy for her to push. So my darling just kept her sitting with her on the chair while we got a little fire going and finished off this fire pit area. Overall, this fire pit is a main attraction as soon as you drive up to the farm. The front of the farmhouse needed some curb appeal. So my darling and I got working on designing and planting a classic country garden, complete with hydrangeas, and lilies, and garden flocks, and roses, and spirea, and hosta, and ornamental grasses, azalea, rhododendron, all sorts of nice plants and flowers that are really gonna cap off the garden. Two years later, the garden is full of life, full of color, the flowers and the plants take up all the room, there's no more bare soil left, it actually looks amazing. The ducklings are getting really big at this point and it's time to start thinking about where they're gonna live. We call it the ducky bunky and the design process didn't take long at all. There aren't any blueprints for this design because they don't exist. Everything came out of my head and is completely measured out and custom built on site. The skeleton of this building is all made using pressure treated lumber. There's a party pool and a party deck for the ducks. We wanted an A-frame cabin style duck house. So it was time to really get practicing those carpentry skills. This duck house took us two months to build from start to finish. The duck house itself is 10 feet by 12 feet but from the ground to the top of the roof, it's 16 feet tall. And that's due to the classic sloped A-frame style. It's not easy sometimes doing things all alone, but I figured out a few tricks of the trade as I go, and it was a lot of trial and error. I installed a self-sticking vinyl tile on the floor inside the duck house because ducks are very wet and I thought it might protect the floor. The run is 30 feet long, and it is also built out of pressure-treated lumber, and it's sitting on top of cement paver stones. That way the wood doesn't touch the ground. All the ducks made themselves right at home. 
they're fully protected from predators, and they're enjoying their new digs. And they sure do love splashing around and having fun in their party pool. And there it is, one of a kind, state of the art, ducky bunky. It's the ultimate duck house. This property already had 40 acres of hay fields, but the hay was in fairly poor condition and it had been overrun by weeds. We don't have the experience, nor the equipment, nor the desire to want to bale our own hay. So what we do is we lease out these 40 acres to our neighbor and they take care of everything. Our neighbor also keeps several horses in our horse paddock just to keep the grass cut down because you know horses love to eat the hay grass. John Deere was having a 0% interest sale so we decided to splurge and purchase a John Deere 3039R compact tractor. And of course we needed a snow blower to clear our driveway. But we also got a wood chipper attachment for it so that we could make our own mulch and wood chips whenever we needed to. There's been a whole lot of equipment that we needed to invest in since buying this property and one of the most versatile pieces of equipment are chainsaws. We now have several of them. We always go with the steel brand because I find that they start up right away and they're very good quality German made. There was a little bit of a learning curve for somebody who never used a chainsaw before, but I think I'm getting the hang of it. We also invested in a log splitter to help us out with the preparation of the firewood for that first winter, and it's been invaluable. A lot of skills we've had to learn. We've also been learning a lot about forest management because the 15 acres of hardwood bush on this property are super overgrown and they really need to be trimmed out and a lot of the dead trees need to be felled. Cats are always keeping me company, always. They're very, very sweet. The spring of 2021 went off in a blaze of glory. I pulled the old rotten chicken coop out to the field and set it on fire. It was very rotten, very insect infested. I didn't want to do anything with the wood, so I just decided to let it burn. It actually took four hours to burn to the ground. And that spring, we had several projects on the go at the same time. One of them being to install frost-free yard hydrants at strategic points around the farm. I had my neighbor, Phil, help me out with the excavation. A second project that we had going on was to actually build our massive vegetable garden. We cemented in all of the corner posts and the center posts. Molly, the old English sheepdog, was always there to keep me company and to supervise the holes that I was digging. She likes to inspect the work that I do. The rest of the posts, I just used ground spikes and just hammered them in easy enough. The future plan for this vegetable garden is to allow us to grow some of our own food, some of our own produce. This garden will help make us less reliant on grocery stores. It's built using pressure treated lumber and the total dimension of this garden is 104 feet by 57 feet. I also used a one inch by one inch hardware fencing just to keep some of the critters out and to help keep our own dog out too. The hardware fencing took a little work in to get it right, but overall I think it turned out pretty good and I'm very pleased. Inside the garden I built my own tunnel trellis, just using some scrap materials and some leftover wood. The garden also needed a grand entrance, so I built this custom garden gate that we can walk through. It's almost like an arbor style and it's pretty nice, pretty durable and it's a pretty great focal point of the garden. Now we're still working at this garden two years later. 
We brought in a whole bunch of fresh soil. We dug out some beds to eliminate the weeds. It took a lot of work and a lot of patience just to get it to where it is right now. We've been building raised beds, adding cardboard underneath the raised beds to block out the weeds, and adding fresh soil and geotextile to the aisles to somehow eliminate the grasses and the weeds. You know Mother Nature, she'll find a way. The John Deere tractor came in handy during this endeavor and it gave us a lot of practice in maneuvering in and around the garden, picking up the soil, so on and so forth. It was very, very integral. We used the Hugel Coulter method of adding rotting wood to the bottom of the beds and we invested so far in six galvanized steel raised beds. They're 30 inches tall, so it's a lot of soil. So you add wood to the bottom to lessen the amount of soil that you need. Overall, the garden is a work in progress, probably gonna take us a couple more years to get it right, and we still need to continue amending the soil to make it more fruitful. The third project that we had on the go at the same time that spring was a custom chicken house build. We needed a place to put our chickens. They've been living in the barn far too long. So I came up with this design of an octagonal, eight-sided, gazebo-style chicken house. Probably the most difficult build of my life, and it really put my carpentry skills to the test. But I was determined to figure out a way to house multiple breeds of chickens without them crossbreeding, and this is the perfect ideal solution. Seven coops in seven different sections of the eight-sided Chateau du Poulet. Overall, I think it looks amazing. I think it's a one-of-a-kind. I'm very proud. It's probably the fanciest thing I've ever built in my whole life. The chickens are loving their life in there. They're laying us some great eggs. They're giving us some great meat. And I couldn't be happier and couldn't ask for anything more from our flock. Our flock consists of Rhode Island Reds, Black Leghorns, and Light Sussex. And they're all very good egg-laying chickens. And they're also heritage meat breeds. For first-time chicken owners, we've sure learned a lot over the past two years, and we feel like we could never live without chickens in our lives again. Later that summer, we got our hands on four goose eggs, and we hatched them ourselves along with some of our khaki Campbell ducks, and sure enough, we got four Emden goslings along with a whole bunch of khaki Campbell ducklings. They were very cute, but we needed a plan for when they got bigger. And while they were growing, I was getting the temporary pool tree fencing set up out in the orchard there so that we can free range the ducks and the geese in the orchard. Little did I know that these goslings would become bonded with me and follow me around the farm wherever I went. Let's see if they'll follow me again. <laughs> I can't get away from these guys. But once they were big enough, we had them free ranging in the permaculture orchard, eating the grass, lessening the cost of our feed and the ducks were eating all the insects and both the ducks and the geese were helping to fertilize all of the pasture there inside the orchard. We wanted a few of these geese to act as guard geese for the ducks as they free ranged. Free ranging your geese and your ducks away from their duck house is also a great way to keep the area clean. So because we free range them, we give them water, 
they splash around, they make a mess, but they do it on the grass so it doesn't become a muddy mess. I also think that they appreciate the life that they're living in our permaculture orchard. We also hatched out our own meat birds for the first time ever in our life and boy was it an experience. We invested in all the equipment needed to get this done and it was a simple enough process. A little bit tough to get over doing the actual harvesting itself but then you know, we ended up with a whole lot of chicken in the freezer and it pretty well lasted close to a year. We felt it important to know where our food comes from and this is just one step in that process. 2022 started with a bang and we got our hands on some Californian rabbits. We want rabbits on the homestead to give us fertilizer we need the manure to amend the garden and bunnies are just too cute aren't they folks they're living in the barn for now until we can build them their rabbitat we have several barn cats in and around the farm i call them the claw crew because they are an integral part of the farm they keep all of the rodent population down they're constantly catching mice moles voles chipmunks you name it, if they can hunt it, they'll catch it. We did get the two boys neutered, but I think I was too late because Maggie Mae Barncat got pregnant and gave birth to four beautiful kittens. We weren't looking to have kittens, but we accepted these kittens into the farm family. And I mean, they're just the cutest. How did we get in Maggie May is an excellent mother. All the kittens are perfectly healthy. They grow so fast, unbelievably fast. And just in a matter of a couple of months, they're running around, jumping, prancing, playing. And I mean, I'm calling them the Clock Crew Juniors right now because, you know, they do have a little bit sharp claws. But for right now, these guys are just getting accustomed to their new home. They're growing, they're eating, they're practicing their hunting skills. And we couldn't be happier to have these little guys on the farm. Sadly, we had just lost a couple of our favorite barn cats to predators here at the farm. And since they were living a free life, that's always gonna be a problem. So I've gone and I've built them a catio attachment onto my workshop. The workshop is now the cat house and the cats are protected overnight. So every day the cats free range and protect the farm but unfortunately at night I lock them up because I love these cats too much and I really don't want to keep losing them to coyotes or something. That spring the most amazing thing happened. One of our YouTube viewers gave us this pup and she's an old English sheepdog and her name is Olive. She's a very sweet puppy. She's growing very quickly. If you want to hear more about that story of how she came to the farm, you'll have to watch a couple of recent videos. And while she was exploring the farm, Molly made sure that she was well protected and felt safe at home. There was an instant bond between the two. Molly knew that she had a baby sister, but also Olive knew that she had a big sister too. Olive has grown a tremendous amount since joining us here at the farm. She gets along with the cats for the most part, but definitely she's soft on Maggie Mae. Olive spends her time getting settled in here at the farm. She gets along great with her big sister, Molly. Molly really watches out for her, which is great to see. Best friends for life. Olive's been training with the animals. She understands not to wander too far away. She always stays close by. And she's always having fun with Molly. The two of them are like two peas in a pod. And these two Old English Sheepdogs are living their best life, free-ranging, on the farm 
and I think that's the ideal situation for a sheepdog. Another secret project that I had on the go at the same time was a goose house. Sadly, our four guard geese were eating our duck eggs, so I was forced to build them a separate house. And I thought it might be funny if it was a goose caboose, because it rhymes and it's fun. And I thought the red would really stand out in the orchard. So now, our geese are living in the world's first goose caboose. At least now they have their own separate house and they can still free range in the orchard with the ducks. They can still protect the ducks, but they have their own place to call home now. They're attacking me. Look at this one. Whoa. These last two years have been an incredible journey for us and we appreciate all those who have been following along. The transformation of our forever homestead is ongoing. I can't wait to see what we can accomplish on this property over the next several years. The transformation is gonna be amazing. It's always a fun time here at the Hidden Spring Farm.